I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com and today we are looking at Blendif in Photoshop. If you like what you see, go ahead and show us with a like. And if you're new here, why not subscribe? We put out five new videos every week, all focused on advanced level photo manipulation. Now let's take a look at Photoshop's Blendif. First things first, what is Blendif? So the Blend If feature in Photoshop blends the contents of a layer based on either the underlying layer or the layer that the Blend If setting is being applied to. Blend If is located in the Layer Style panel, which can be accessed by double-clicking a layer anywhere outside of its layer name. Let's double-click and look at our Blend If sliders. There are two sets of toggles, the left representing the darks and the right the lights. Basically, when using Blend If, you are telling Photoshop to blend if this layer or the underlying layer is a certain brightness value. These toggles set those values. If a layer has a Blend If setting applied, there will be an icon of two overlapping squares right next to the layer's name. So how do you use Blend If? First, create a layer, any kind of layer. For now, I'm going to create a normal layer and paint some blue on it, just so that we can really see what's going on. Let's double click the new layer and move the left underlying layer toggle to the middle of the slider. All the blue has now been removed or blended from the darker value ranges. We can always create a smoother blend by splitting the toggles in half. Hold Alt or Option on a Mac, and then click and drag one half of the toggle. The further the toggles, the smoother the blend. The right side works exactly the same, only this will tell Photoshop to blend into the lighter values of the image. What about the This Layer slider? The concept is similar, only instead of looking at the underlying layer's value, it will blend the values on the image the blend if is being applied to. You can always readjust the blend if at any time by reopening the layer styles panel. And if you ever want to remove your blend if settings, you can just right click clear layer style, which will also remove any other layer styles as well as reset the layer mode and opacity back to normal. So the less drastic alternative is just going back into blend if and resetting the sliders by hand. Now, there are a million ways to use Blend If, so I'm just going to cover two of my favorites, starting with creating shadows and highlights. Let's create a curves adjustment layer and bring the top anchor point to the left, increasing the highlights of the image. This will, of course, increase the overall brightness of the image, but we want to pinpoint the very highest points of the face only, so let's double click to open the Layer Styles panel. Hold Alt or Option and bring the right half of the left toggle to the right, going until the highlight of the face just starts to darken, and then pulling it back just a bit. Now the left half gets pulled inwards until we have a nice smooth blend. The highlights are removed from the shadows, but the transition is still nice and smooth. Once we're happy, we can press OK. We aren't done yet though. Let's invert the curves layer mask, filling it with black. Now we can take a soft brush set to a low flow rate and mask in our highlights exactly where we want them. We can do the same exact thing to the shadows as well. Creating a curves layer, deepening the darks, adjusting the blend if so that the layer blends from the highlights, and then masking in our desired areas. Let's do it one more time with a select color layer, as I want to deepen the lips and freckles so that they are a darker, more vibrant red. My select color settings are going to be affecting the reds, with a negative 28, a plus 22, a plus 24, and a plus 42 finally. 
Now we can go into blend if and adjust the sliders so that the freckles and the lips remain red, but both the shadows and the highlights are left out. We can finish up with a round of masking. Now let's look at how we can use the same blend if process to apply textures. Here I clipped a broken glass texture set to screen into my subject, but the subject is full of bright highlights and dark, dark shadows. We want the texture to almost exclusively show in the mid-range and highlights. As it is now, the texture looks like it's floating on our subject, not embedded into them, as they're not being affected by the shadows. Which is a great scenario for Blend If. Here we only have to move the right side of the left toggle the smallest amount to get some major results. The same thing applies to this texture which is adding some reflection to the subject's body. Lastly, I'm going to click through this image's color grade folder so you can see how Blend If plays a part in its coloring. Notice how the second curves layer is solely for bringing some blues into the highlights of the subject, not necessarily for brightening. And the curves layer brings out the precise highlights without affecting the deep blacks of the image. Now if you want to see how you can use Blend If to create an ultra realistic makeup or body paint effect, check out my how to create a digital face paint effect in Photoshop video, linked down below and at the end of this video, uh, most likely. For now however, that was our quick dive into Photoshop's Blend If, incredibly underrated and one of my absolute favorite Photoshop functions. And I distinctly remember it being one of those tools that once I was introduced to it, it was an absolute game changer for me. I use it in my color grades, my skin effects, lighting effects. I actually doubt there is a single image I have done in the past five plus years where I didn't use a blend if. So give it a try, play and experiment and let me know how you end up using it. I think that about does it for today, I could drone on forever, so like if you like, subscribe if you really like, and let me know what you'd like to see next. Or let me know down in the comments if you already used Blendif, or if you plan on using it now. I am super curious. I am also Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com, see you next time.